Welcome back. Now the HIV AIDS Prevention and Control Bill tabled if passed into law in its current form, would criminalize a broad range of conduct, including intentional and attempted HIV transmission, and misleading statements or information regarding curing, preventing, or controlling HIV. But there is divided opinion in regard to these contentious closes of the bill and how to confront this scourge. Human rights activists say if the bill is passed with such radical proposals, it could reverse the gains, yet lawmakers almost unanimously agree that the country must change its approach towards the fight against HIV AIDS and hence this kind of legislation. To discuss this further is Makere University School of Law lecturer Dr. Sinje Kabumba joining us on Talk of the Nation. Welcome to Talk of the Nation, Basinje. Thank you, Shana. How was your week? Not too bad. How was yours? It was good. Mm -hmm. We'll get right into the discussion. Mm -hmm. The HIV AIDS bill. Mm -hmm. Criminalizing HIV transmission is generally discredited mm -hmm. by global health and AIDS organizations. Mm -hmm. Research shows that countries with similar re legislation yeah. rarely apply it. And when it is done, it is actually arbitrary and has no impact on preventing HIV infections. Mm -hmm. But lawmakers believe that we need harsh measures such as these, especially where a number of people are infecting people mm. deliberately, and mm. it's important in the fight they actually claim. Mm. Is there a middle ground? Yes, there is. Um, the problem here is that the mischief that the law intends uh, to, 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 to catch is, is, is it it there? The idea of people intentionally transmitting HIV, it's, it's real, it's a real thing, but this particular approach is not the right way to go. This is not to say that there should be no a punishment for such people, but the thing is that putting it in a, in a specific, an HIV specific law is problematic in the sense mm -hmm. of the message it sends to people who are living with HIV, and it's, it's not well situated in the broader context of HIV, which is problematic in terms of social context, the violence against women, women are the first people who get to know their status in most cases because of their uh, pregnancy related uh, questions, and even questions about poverty, and even questions about ability of persons to prove these offenses. So it's just the idea that the middle ground has not been found. One can use the Penal Code Act, for instance, to, to, um, to address this. So there's no need to have such offenses in different acts. It has been done successfully in a number of countries around the world. People have used uh, questions such as grievous bodily harm. So that has been used successfully elsewhere to convict persons who are found to do that, including one Uganda, uh, I think it was in Kadad or something. So there's precedent for using existing general offenses to, um, to address such ills when they happen. But th the idea of putting it in an HIV Act sends a message that, you know, and it feeds into the stereotypes that people living with HIV are out to get, you know, the public, they are inevitably and, you know, intrinsically, you know, uh, out, you know, to spread it, which is problematic. But also more, more, more problematical is the idea that it's an, you see, intention is it, it, you're talking about mens rea. The, so it's an offense that can only be com uh, committed by someone who knows their HIV status. Mm -hmm. The only way to know HIV status is go for testing. To test, yes. The problem we have right now is that few people are going for testing. So you create this act, th this offense, a specific offense, the clear message it's sending people is that if you don't get caught, don't go to test, which is very problematic. Let's look at the issue of intent. Yeah. What is the test to determine that one acted with an intention to transmit the virus, you know, or yeah. attempted to transmit the virus. Yeah. Isn't the law going to find itself in a situation where it's, it's running into intricacies of statutory mm -hmm. interpretation? Yeah, well, technically speaking, it could happen. They could prove intent in certain rare cases, for instance. How do you prove intent? Well, <laughs> as, assuming <laughs> in the rare case that someone wrote a list, for instance, and said, <laughs> these are the following people are the ones I intended to infect, and then it's found, and, you know, uh, theoretically, it's possible, you know. But it really goes back as to whether we want to go down the criminal route, the criminal approach. Because HIV is really, in the first case, a public health crisis, mm -hmm. much like malaria, much like tuberculosis. So we, criminal law may not be, the, if the emphasis on criminal law, it may even block out everything else. For instance, now, the discussion around this bill has inevitably centered on criminalization, but it has a number of good things. Uh, it provides for support to persons with HIV, the idea that testing centers must be accurate. But once you put such a, a divisive and controversial clause, everything else um, goes away into the background. The person living with HIV who might otherwise have felt comforted, you know, it's the first time we're passing 
a law, specifically for HIV, yes. notwithstanding our long history as a country, really as a world leader in terms of preventing it. So you, initially, that worked because people living with HIV were brought on board. People felt comfortable about say that have HIV, and we're a world leader in this, and we achieved certain steps That's because right, of yeah. that. But now you have an, a, a bill, an act that says these people whom I've been working with, with success now as sort of potential criminals walking around, very problematic. Okay. Since we're obviously looking to criminalize it, yeah. what, in your opinion, would be mm -hmm. the ingredients of this crime, for I, I, example? Just yes. help us try and understand. Uh, so it would be the idea that you had sex knowingly, without precaution, because that in some jurisdiction have been found that if you have, if you have used condom, for instance, you could argue that there was no intention because you used protection. But the, it would be that you knowingly expose another person um, to, HIA, to uh, the risk of infection through the lack of caring or actually wanting to have that person, you see. Um, so th those would be the ingredients. But you see the problem, and uh, Professor Vinand Nantulia, the chairperson of the AIDS Committee, has pointed out that Uganda, we don't have at this moment the ability, because you'd have to show that the particular strain, for instance, of the HIV that one person has is the one... Actually came from, uh, from a this particular person, person and X. And proving that is, will be problematic. And at the point where now you're both infected, the question now becomes determining who gave it to who. Of course, using um, CD4 count, CTC, you might, but that technology may not be here. So we want to channel resources into finding these these sophisticated gadgets while we don't not enough people are being treated. So there's a question of priorities, I think. Okay. Um, the bill also includes mandatory yep. testing because we looked at the issue of testing yeah. and permits a broad disclosure of HIV status to any other person yep. with whom an infected HIV person is in close or continuous contact, including yep. but not limited to a sexual partner. If mm. the nature of contact, mm. in the opinion of the medical practi practitioner, poses a clear and present danger of HIV transmission yeah. to that person. A bit yeah. of mouthful. Yeah. Lawmakers say that mm. this particular section will protect vulnerable <laughs> women. Mm. But like you said, obviously there is evidence that yeah. laws criminalizing HIV yeah. and permitting broad disclosure yeah. affect women most. I yeah. mean, go there's going to be more violence, yeah. there's going to be more discrimination and yeah. further stigma. Yeah. So my question is, yeah. have our lawmakers clearly yeah. thought this through? I don't think so, and it's, it's unfortunate because in the, for the past five years or so, I've been involved in certain um, interactions with lawmakers in this regard, and regard to this and other bills. And, and you see, what, what's problematic is that the international best practices right now that we could have learned from, there's the international guidelines on HIV, AIDS, and human rights that really show, that, that contain a collated best practices around the world. We have examples in Africa and elsewhere showing that mandatory testing simply doesn't work yeah. in the sense of the poor who are actually tested. So it looks like a neutral law, but in actual fact, women will be disproportionately affected. It's just the figures are there, even in Uganda just in terms of where the, the burden is. It, it's so the idea of an evidence-based law, which one would have hoped for, unfortunately, we simply we're not getting. I think we're getting an emotion-based law. And I, I think it really goes back to the idea that, you see, it starts from a good place, the idea that people should test, that be, but you see, um, how then how, how you determine how to get to that good place, I think, is, is the where problem. Is where we're having yes, challenges. Because if the idea is get everyone to test, provide treatment. See, if, if I know that if I test, there will be treatment possible, why in the world don't I go to Wouldn't test? Wouldn't I test, yeah. Precisely. So create incentives, um, do it the right way from a public health approach. And for, but the criminal approach, the mandatory testing, it just simply won't work. Okay, and I want us to look a little bit in detail to the good, at the good side of this bill because yep. the United Nations Secretary General, yeah. in a commentary last year titled yeah. Snatching Defeat from Victory in, in the AIDS Crisis, says, yeah. and I quote, mm -hmm. with its good mm -hmm. intentions mm -hmm. and flawed provisions, this is in mm -hmm. respect to the Ugandan bill, yeah. it is a good title for Uganda's HIV AIDS bill as well. Yeah. Reforming the bill and ensuring the law supports effective HIV policies and protects the rights of people mm -hmm. living with HIV will help Uganda to again be a leader and a success in the fight against AIDS, end mm -hmm. quote. Mm -hmm. I'd like us to look yeah. in detail at mm -hmm. the good side of this bill, if at all, because no, what we're seeing right yes, now is yeah. human rights yes. activists saying yeah, yeah. this bill yeah, yeah, is a total yeah. no-no. Yeah, yeah, what is yeah. the good side of the bill? Well, there's lots of it, and, uh, and actually when the title has changed, because initially it was prevention and control, and we pointed out that that's coercive. It's prevention, it's, it's military language. But everything is coercive. Is yeah, it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, and it shouldn't be. So they changed it. We wanted, we wanted it to be HIV management. Now it's HIV prevention and management, bill, which is fine. So even just telling them, and, and it sends a message. But there are also provisions there for accurate testing, which is very important. The idea that um, counseling, it provides for a very extensive provision of counseling before testing, and, and it's voluntary in this case. Um, provisions also for access to treatment. Um, questions about support discrimination and that's a very important area because 
the bill provides for discrimination, non-discrimination. It says HIV persons, people living there, should not be discriminated in homes, communities, societies. Extremely progressive. Um, so in terms of treatment, in terms of access to uh, goods, universal goods, non-discrimination, it, it's, it's a good bill. So all that was needed was just to get out this problematic thing that is a distraction, really, because it creates a distraction that it's another way, it's good uh, provision. Even the fact that the parliament is coming up with a specific law, to I it really shows commitment, which has been missing from at least legislature for a long time. Um, and, and so that's why it's really sad and unfortunate that with this good effort, then it's watered down at the same time. It is actually a distraction because that's that's all anyone yeah. really thinks yeah. about when you talk about the HIV bills. Yeah. Um, now, just to wind up the discussion, statistics show that there is complacency in the fight against HIV AIDS, yeah. which has led to the rise in prevalence, in mm -hmm. the prevalence rate from 6.7% to 7.3%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we know that the fight against the HIV mm -hmm. scourge is mm -hmm. beyond good laws, mm -hmm. but pragmatism. Yeah. What can we do as a country, in the words of mm -hmm. Ban Ki-moon, to be a leader and a success mm -hmm. in the fight against AIDS? Yeah, you see, part of that, 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 that um, reversal was also explained by our shift from a country, from methods that have been proven to work, the, the openness of talking about, let's talk about this, it, it's happening, that made us move forward. Then we moved from ABC to just emphasizing, be faithful, be faithful, and, and really discouraging condom use. So the, uh, and it was really, and there's no way of going around, it was really faith-based, connected to Bush and, and the whole PEPFA thing, and the whole um, fundamentalism, really. And that has led to loss of lives directly. And, and it's very problematic to think that as a country, we abandon the evidence-based approach for a time and move towards untested um, methods to say, let's assume all Ugandans are going to be faithful. Let's <laughs> assume Ugandans are not going to have sex. Let's emphasize. And that was problematic. And unfortunately, this bill continues. Now we've, we've come back to our senses as a country. And now the, the B, the C, the condom use has come back into the, the, the position of the equation. But yeah. now, unfortunately, in this law, we are now going, so it's a really a question of, we, stay, we stepped away from the evidence-based approach. We need to get back onto that track. Okay, so we need to get back. Does mm. the message need to change, you think? No, no, I think ABC has been working very well, and only that now, even in terms of responding in terms of the law, I think we need to do things that are based on science uh, and not emotion. Okay, thank you very much for That's joining us on Talk of the Nation tonight. Always a pleasure. That was Constitutional Law Don, Dr. Businje Kabumba, joining us on Talk of the Nation to discuss the HIV AIDS Prevention and Control Bill. We will take a break and return shortly with NTV Weekend Sport. You are watching NTV Weekend Edition.